Welcome to Screen Medic Screencasts. This screencast will cover the cell cycle, mitosis, where a somatic cell replicates its contents and divides into two. This property of cells to divide is extremely important, not just to enable young creatures to grow and mature, but also to allow for a renewal of cells to replace dead or injured tissue in adults. As you're probably aware, some cells replicate more frequently than others. For example, epithelial cells that produce skin and line the gastrointestinal tract are constantly being replaced, whereas nerve cells will generally not replicate once the brain is fully formed. The process of cell division in a somatic cell is called mitosis, and it results in the production of two genetically identical cells. A different process is used to produce germ cells, sperm and eggs where the resulting daughter cells are genetically different from their parent cell. This is called meiosis and will be the subject of another screencast. The mitotic cell cycle is divided into two stages. The first, interphase, is when the cell prepares for replication and the second is when the cell divides. The first part of interphase is called growth one and this is when the cell increases the number of organelles and other cell contents, but not its DNA. The duration of this phase is very variable and can be very short in embryonic cells, less than 24 hours. Cells that are destined to replicate are held in growth one until their DNA is checked and if necessary repaired. This important step prevents damaged DNA from passing into the next generation of cells. However, some cells can remain in this phase indefinitely. These cells, which are never destined to replicate, are said to be in growth zero, a quiescent state. If a cell's DNA cannot be corrected, cells will be programmed apoptose, in other words, programmed to die. This is called the growth one checkpoint, and if it passes this stage, the cell is committed to replicate. The checkpoint is extremely important in the fight against cancer. Specific genes control this checkpoint in growth 1. For example, p53, a tumour suppressor, prevents cells with damaged DNA from moving into the next stage of the cell cycle. However, if this gene or other similar genes are defective, a cell with damaged DNA is free to enter the growth cycle and re replicate, ultimately leading to tumour growth. Once a cell enters the synthesis stage, the DNA in the cell nucleus begins to replicate. The double strands of the DNA helix separate by the breaking of hydrogen bonds between nucleotides. Newly synthesized complementary nucleotides attach to the unpaired original nucleotides, producing two identical sets of double helix DNA in preparation for the rest of the cell cycle. Once this is complete, the cell is ready to move into the final phase of interphase, growth 2. Once in growth 2, the cell continues to grow and produce additional enzymes and cell contents. Most importantly, the centrosomes, which orchestrate the movement of chromosomes during mitosis, also finish replicating. An additional checkpoint in growth 2 once again assesses the state of replicating DNA preventing the cell from continuing with the cell cycle if there's been damage to the DNA during the synthesis phase. Once a cell has passed the second checkpoint, it enters mitosis, during which the nucleus breaks down and the DNA replicated in interphase is split to form the nucleus contents of two new cells. During mitosis, the cell passes through four stages, prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. The first stage of mitosis is prophase. During early prophase, chromatin, the uncoiled form of DNA, condenses and shortens to become chromosomes. This condensation process stops the DNA strands from becoming entangled with one another as they move during mitosis. Because of DNA replication during the synthesis stage, each chromosome has a second, identical chromosome. These join together at a central region called a centromere. 
these joined paired chromosomes are called chromatids. On each centromere, a structure called a kinetochore forms to provide an attachment point for the microtubules. Microtubules are protein structures that are part of the cytoskeleton. After the nuclear envelope breaks down, they lengthen, pushing the centrosomes to the poles and lengthening the cell. The microtubules and centrosome complexes are called mitotic spindles. In metaphase, the microtubules of the mitotic spindle align the chromatids in the exact centre of the mitotic spindle, in a place called the metaphase plate. A final checkpoint must now be passed, a check to ensure all chromatids are in the correct position before the chromatids are finally split apart. Once all the chromatids are correctly positioned, the cell enters anaphase. The centromeres of the chromatids split and each chromosome is pulled by a microtubule towards the pole of the cell where the centrosome is positioned. Under a microscope, the chromosomes appear V-shaped as the centromeres pull the trailing arms of the chromosomes towards the pole. The final stage of DNA replication, but not for the whole cell, now occurs, telophase. Once chromosome movement has stopped, the chromosomes begin to unravel back into chromatin. The nuclear envelope reforms around the DNA and the mitotic spindles break up. However, the story is not yet complete. The cell itself must divide into two, and this is done by a process called cytokinesis. Once the two identical cells have finished dividing, each cell then enters interphase once again. Cytokinesis begins in late anaphase, when a cleave furrow forms around the cell as an indentation of the cell membrane. Microfilaments just inside the plasma membrane form a contractile ring which pulls the membrane inwards finally pinching off the two cells. Thank you for watching this screencast and I hope you will join me again for the next screencast on meiosis.